We all know that planning is the first step in building products with AI agents. But here's the problem. Your plan probably has massive gaps you don't even realize. You need to provide the exact context your AI agent needs for each specific task. Without clear guidance, the agent just fills in those gaps on its own and builds something completely different from what you wanted. Tracer solves this. It's a planning layer specifically designed to catch and fill those gaps before any code gets written. You can think of it as a planning layer. It makes sure that the input going into the AI agent is as clear as possible and that there aren't any gaps left in the instructions for it to hallucinate. It has its own thinking process and then a feedback loop as well, where if it feels like a point or something isn't clear enough, it makes sure to get that from you to fill out the gaps. This ensures that the agent does what you intended and if the agent encounters something new, such as a UI library that it's not familiar with, the agent knows everything it needs for implementation. Tracer is basically an extension. It needs to be installed in your IDE. I'll be using Visual Studio right now, but you can go with whatever IDE you're using. Head over to the extensions panel and search for Tracer. Since I've already installed it, you can see it's right here. But when you click install, you'll have to sign up for an account and then you can start using it. This is an MVP for a content management tool, and I've built this through Tracer. While I've only built out the front end today, I had one specific requirement that made this particularly interesting. I wanted to use Hero UI as my component library. Now you might wonder why Hero UI matters here. Most AI assistants handle popular libraries like Shad CN pretty well since they're trained on them, but I wanted to see how Tracer would handle something less common, something that would actually challenge its capabilities. You can see Tracer open here on the left side of the screen. Now Tracer has distinct stages in its workflow, and I'm going to guide you through each of them one by one. The first stage we encounter is prompt analysis. When I fed it my requirements, through a requirement.md file, Tracer didn't just jump straight into implementation. Instead, it came back with clarifying questions about my prompt, asking about things like the tech stack I preferred and other implementation details. If I had missed this step and many of these details weren't filled out, then the agent would have had massive gaps in its plan and would have implemented something completely different from what I wanted. Based on my answers to these questions, it refined and modified the original prompt to better match what I actually required. After I provided my requirements and answered its questions, Tracer went even further by explaining its reasoning. It essentially gave me the complete roadmap of how it planned to build the application step by step. This is where we move on to the next stage, breaking everything down into manageable phases based on the analysis. This is the complete project breakdown that it is going to implement. First, it is going to set up the project foundation by installing all the necessary dependencies and libraries, making sure everything is properly integrated. From there, it's going to progress through each subsequent stage, including the design implementation. You can see that these are the breakdowns that it's going to implement for this project. Next up, we have our implementation phase. Here you'll actually have two options available to you. You can either have it hand off the plan to an existing AI agent that you're already using, such as Claude Code or Cursor, or you can have the implementation done using Tracer itself. For this demonstration, I'll use Tracer itself because it has its own unique implementation process. Later in the video though, I'll also show you the handoff feature so you can see both options in action. The breakdowns will be run one by one, exactly as Tracer has planned them out, starting with the first one that handles the project foundation setup. When you start one of the tasks, you'll notice these green marks appear on screen. The first one confirms that Tracer understood what you're asking for, which in this case involves setting up a Next.js project with TypeScript, installing dependencies, configuring CSS, adding the UI library, and everything else needed for the foundation. The second mark represents the plan specification, and this is where things get particularly interesting. Tracer performs a deep analysis first, then refines the prompt and explains its approach along with the full reasoning behind why it's choosing that particular implementation method. Moving to the third step, it tracks all the amendments, which proves incredibly useful. Tracer shows you what's happening through visual badges, where an M appears when a file gets modified and an N indicates a new file being created. Additionally, it provides references so you know exactly which files changed, how they changed, and the reasoning behind those changes. 
Finally, at the end of the process, Tracer generates a comprehensive README file. This full documentation walks through the entire process, explains everything in detail, provides all the references, and shows the final code changes. You'll also notice thoughtful details like a Git ignore being added automatically, which demonstrates Tracer's ability to plan according to the real developer workflows that it's based on. If you're enjoying the content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. We try to get better with every video and your feedback in the comments section always helps us out. Now we get to verification, which is probably the most important stage of Tracer's process. This is when Tracer reviews its own code, going back through everything to identify and classify any issues it finds into three levels, minor, major, and critical. In this example, you can see a critical error where Tracer caught that I need to use the hero UI provider instead of the next UI provider. If I'd missed that, the entire project would break. It also catches configuration and import issues. For instance, here it's telling me the hero UI plugin for Tailwind CSS was imported or configured incorrectly. After identifying these issues, Tracer doesn't just stop there. It moves on to fix them as well, utilizing the feedback loop that we're starting to see in so many context systems nowadays. Now, remember when I mentioned the handoff feature in Tracer earlier? I decided to execute the fixes using Claude code. While you can certainly fix issues one by one, there's also the convenient option to implement fixes for all the issues at once using Claude code. This is the output that was generated Everything is functional in the UI prototype and the buttons work as they should. This is the main dashboard that got created. If I try to create a post by clicking here, you can see that the post does get created. But with the platform, you can schedule them for later as well. This shows that Hero UI was implemented correctly and that we didn't face any problems with it because of the planned approach that we took using Tracer. You'll also notice we've got some other views available as well. For example, there's this calendar view that helps visualize everything about the content and schedule. Since the development of a product is an active process, this naturally means that problems can arise at any point throughout the development timeline. At this moment, everything's working fine with no bugs or issues present. However, I wanted to demonstrate Tracer's capabilities when it comes to fixing problems in existing projects, so I decided to create a scenario to showcase this feature. As you can see here, Tailwind CSS is currently at version 3, which is working perfectly with Next.js. To demonstrate Tracer's problem-solving abilities, I'm going to intentionally upgrade Tailwind and show you how Tracer handles these kinds of compatibility issues. After making that change, I asked Tracer to detect if we had any errors and then sent the prompt through for analysis. Tracer completed its analysis and provided me with the solution. You can see that it's ready to apply the fixes it identified. Notice this badge appearing here? That indicates Tracer's about to modify the package.json file, which needs to be changed to revert back to the correct version number. Following through with the process, Tracer went ahead and executed the fix, successfully modifying the package.json file. The solution involved downgrading both Hero UI and Tailwind CSS to make the versions compatible with each other. To verify that the application worked properly after these changes, I ran the execution command in the terminal. The result was exactly what we needed. The CSS had been successfully downgraded and everything was working perfectly with Next.js again. Most importantly, the design remained intact and fully functional after the fix was applied. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.